We're going to introduce ourselves, of course, we're starting doing this, sharing data with you. We'll talk about what the Book Direct Day is, how it got started, uh, and try to think why people are interested in this topic nowadays. Um, are, they, are direct bookings actually cheaper for hosts? Uh, is it as well, in a way, isn't it direct booking actually pushed by people who want to flog their, you know, direct bookings, uh, software, websites, channel management, right? Is there, is there a whole conspiracy to get us to buy yet more services and software? Again, I'm the devil's advocate, no hate here. All right, so um, as I said, so Mark, maybe you want to introduce yourself for people who may not you know you yet. Yeah, um, so first and foremost, uh, my name is Mark Simpson. Um, I founded a company called Boostly back in 2016. I've been in this industry of hospitality and short-term rental for, for many, many years now. Um, a lot of people in the Zoom room will, I think they know who I am. Um, but for those who don't, I was uh, pretty much born into hospitality on a 200-acre farm stay bed and breakfast in Scarborough in the northeast of the UK. Um, I grew up with my three uh, brothers and sisters, and I had one goal, and that was to escape. <laughs> I wanted to escape the small town. I wanted to go and travel, and I wanted to be a, a soccer player, a football player. Uh, one problem with that, I'm not very good at playing football. If anybody's ever seen me play football before, you will know why. So I fell into coaching, soccer coaching, and um, got my qualifications, um, got my UEFA B badges, and then got the amazing opportunity to go to America. Spent many years in America coaching, coaching soccer, coaching the football, and um, 2011, ended up back in the UK, ended up in London of all places. And my parents, who had the business for about 25 years at that point, asked me and my, my then fiancé, now wife, to come back into the business. And that started me on this very crazy journey of um, helping that family business grow online, visibility through websites and social media, uh, to then in 2016, actually helping a couple of local hosts in Scarborough how to navigate email, social media, how to do a few tweaks on, we'll talk about the OTAs. And uh, from there, I can't really explain what's happened from there for the last five years. It's been a bit crazy. Now we've got, we're doing this, releasing my book today. Um, there's over 1,000 hosts that we've helped build the direct booking website with. There's over 1,000 hosts who are uh, doing the training side of Boostly all over the world. And the podcast is, is one of the top 2%. Um, of the podcast downloads in the, in the world, which is crazy. And, and I say the book today, and now I'm speaking you. to yourself here to both. So it's, it's, it's crazy. It's been, it's been insane. And everything has been founded on one thing, which is direct bookings, which is why on today of all days being book direct day, um, hashtag book direct day, if you want to go check it out on social media, it's really important to have this conversation because there are still so many people who either don't know about direct bookings, don't believe in direct bookings. And I feel that everybody in the Zoom room with me is going to be a very one-sided discussion to, to both. Is obviously let me tell team. you, let me tell you. I mean, <laughs> that's why somebody had to do the job. So thanks, Mark, for the introduction. And again, I will show the cover of your book in uh, just a few minutes. So um, I'm Tabo. Uh, I, I hear you, Mark. You had you three three siblings and you run away from your village as fast as you can. I had I have six siblings. I uh, ran even faster than you and traveled the world as well. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so I have uh, I own properties in, in on a French island called St. Bart's and as well uh, in Bali, in, in Indonesia. Uh, I've been doing that for a while. Uh, I also worked for five years at Booking.com. I know. I know some some people someone had to do it. But well, actually, what <laughs> what what they wanted is that they were looking for they when they saw Airbnb growing so much, they wanted people from the industry to join them, explain to them what this whole vacation rental thing was about, self catering places, what these small owners they didn't know about, basically they didn't know about us. So. For five years, I was at the headquarters working with them, trying to adapt the tools to the market. As I said, your book is being released. Anything else you want to add to about your book, Mark? Are we good? No, no, it's, it's all good. It's available on Amazon right now to go and purchase. Uh, the Audible version is coming later today. Um, if you're watching this after the, the 2nd of February, it'll be available now. The, the Kindle and the print version is, is ready. So yeah, please go and check it out with the, with the link that you can see, booster.co.uk forward slash book. 
All right, exactly. And on my side, um, yes, yeah, so we've launched as well, a, as I said, Rentals Club launched a network, the private network. I see a few people from there. Hello, Daniela. Uh, basically, we have a basic level that is free. Every Wednesday, you get a newsletter. We talk about the big trends, you know, what, you know, Airbnb is up to or how to do a homeowner acquisition campaign if you're a property manager. We talk about the big trends on the market, you know, book direct versus OTAs, for example, new technology. And also we have a private network called Skaters uh, Network, where basically we help people get results, where we do masterminds, for example, we have private calls about investments or it's kind of topics. So feel free to go to www.skaters.network.com to check it out. All right, data. So. I'm going to share with you just like quickly three slides with data. That's it. And then we go to the live debate and I stop sharing my slides. But these data comes from exactly as Mark was saying in an intro, this data has been shared by Amy Highnote. Uh, Amy Highnote basically somewhat, let's say, invented the book direct movements in the vacation rental industry. We'll get into more details later, but she's really somebody to know here when it comes to the topic. And she's and she owns VR, she runs VR Mintel. VR Mintel is a just like rental scale up, like an industry news website. And she's partnered with Key Data Dashboard to share data about the US market precisely, um, property management companies in the US in traditional vacation rental markets. So mostly non-urban, I would say non-urban US, right? And what they see here in terms of uh, trends is that basically direct bookings generate a higher average stay value. Basically the booking values, the reservations uh, are, 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 um, are bigger. So the money, the, the amount people are paying is just more than through let's say Airbnb, which is in pink, Furbo in blue or booking.com in Rain again in the chat. If you uh, something you've seen, if you've seen that your direct bookers were bringing you, uh, were basically making bigger bookings. I'm not talking about the profit you're making. I'm talking about the size of the booking. Uh, let us know. W one factor for that is as a second slide is that they tend to stay longer apparently, uh, and that's interesting because that's even through the pandemic, right? Basically, direct bookings, uh, according to um, what Amy shared, is about you know around six days. On average, in terms of length of, of stay, Booking.com, of course, being the shortest one. As you may know, Booking.com uh, caters to people who are looking for you know, both hotels and vacation rentals. So they tend to have a behavior closer to hotel bookers and to shorter stays. I should know about that. Uh, again, if this is something you see, right, are your direct bookers also booking longer? That's interesting. And yet, why do we have a debate? Because of what she shared today. She shared actually that the share of direct bookings, and I've seen that people in a comment have like up, up into 100%, which is amazing. But that share for property managers in the US is going down. That especially in 2021, that share was went down, right? Basically, it was 35% of the bookings, you know, against 47% in 2018. Uh, what went up were basically, especially last year, Airbnb and, and Verbal. Airbnb jumped from 13 to 17%. Verbal went from 18 to 20%, 21%. Um, so we'll talk about why this may have happened in 2021 and why people are in 2022. I've got a few ideas, but again, that's to me, that's a source of a debate. Okay, it's bringing more money, great, but for how long? And should you neglect, should, should you neglect the other uh, channels? And it's just maybe just a source of cost so i will shall stop sharing and mark um what did you think of the data first i've listened to a lot of podcasts youtube videos interviews that you've done and, and a few people have talked about when it comes to stats and i think something that you said is is very important in that is that with all the numbers that have been released and with all the stats that have been released you've got to be able to sit back and look at the context around it um there's definitely reasons to why these numbers that, that, that are happening but i feel that for everybody here who looking at those numbers you've got to really sort of bring it home to not only you your business your location but also your, your niche as well because everywhere everywhere is, is totally different there'll be people looking at this in the cities for example who have got properties in a city but be people who have got properties in a very touristy location and maybe they're a guest house or there's people who've got a rental in, in a touristy like sort of seaside location and it's 
it's really important to always look at these numbers and, and have it as something to go, okay, this is good. So you've got a bit of a benchmark, but you've really got to look at the context around it. For example, the reason why direct bookings in 2020, especially after um, say April to uh, August in 2020 would have dramatically gone up and the OTA will have dramatically decreased is because if you remember, especially in the UK, Airbnb closed off all availability. So if you tried to book a property in the UK um, and you wanted to book it through your favorite OTA, you couldn't do because there was none. So what people were having to do, were having to think a little, go on to the Google and find people directly, which is what happened. And also as well, hosts, and I'd love to say that a lot of the hosts that are in here who were switched on, utilized Facebook groups, Facebook marketplaces. They, they sort of worked out how to go outside of the OTAs to sort of put their business visible. And so the numbers are important. The numbers, you know, I think we're all fed up of looking at graphs since 2020 because we seem to be getting them on a day-by-day -day basis of, of charts and numbers and um, all of that jazz. But I think it's important to look at, but it's always, for me, the one thing that I always do is look at the sort of the context from the numbers that we're looking at. And I feel that once once you do that, then it, it really does help um, sort of take a look behind the numbers, so to speak. So I will politely agree and disagree with you, Mark. <laughs> And this is why I love speaking to you. Exactly. This is why I really wanted today. The... This is why I wanted today to be you because exactly. you are by far the most switched on person in this whole industry. And there's loads of people talking, <laughs> but you are by far the most switched on because you've got such a good viewpoint on this. Because um, I feel that you, out of everybody that I know, can can offer this insight, and it's and it's perfect insight. So please agree and please disagree. And I love to. To, to sort of have a back and forth on it. Yeah, and, and again, I know I'm playing a room where, you know, of course, you know, who hates direct bookings, right? Again, as I said. Uh, but here, well, I, what I agree with you is that, again, that's why I pointed out the, the data. With, whenever you look at data, exactly as you said, like, what what's the source? Which market are we looking into? And here, again, it's professional property managers, professional property managers, probably with more than 20 properties on average, right? in the US and probably in, in, in traditional vacation rental markets because that's where key data, which is a software company, that's where their clients are, that's where they pull data from. So uh, to um, Mark's point, if you were in the UK, probably it played out differently. Something I want to, 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 to say as well, which actually could argue for you should be on the OTAs, that what happened in the US last year, 2021, could be, for example, that if you were there, like. Airbnb and Verbal have been investing a lot into advertising. Commercials on TV were big. I think actually Verbal uh, in, uh, in the first half of the year spent even more money than Airbnb on advertising. Like, I mean, if you were on, on YouTube or on TV, you couldn't miss them. Even on a French market, which I know a bit, I could see Verbos, which is whose brand is Abritel in France anyway. They're they're everywhere. So they've been investing a lot. And what could have happened is that suddenly people were more aware that this company existed. Believe it or not, a lot of people actually have been introduced to vacation rentals, right? Uh, in during the pandemic, and they, they don't know where to go. And the first thing that where it will turn to is they were used to booking hotels, where to, for example. Uh, Expedia, or they would look what's on TV to know, you know where to have a choice. So they would look at Verbo. So in a way, you could argue that maybe what happened, this push of Airbnb and Verbo was due to advertising. But maybe what's happening, it's bringing the pie for everyone. Maybe people are aware and the first time they're booking with them, maybe next time with us. But what could be happening as well is that maybe, maybe people thought that you know, uh, refunds would be easier for OTAs. Yes or no, could argue differently, right? Um, and uh, um, so that's all the, the reasons. Another reason why is that maybe also um, vacation rentals uh, websites like Verbo, for example, or large property managers like Vacasa, they can offer things that our websites cannot. For example, you can, uh, you can do things like book now, pay later. You know, you have these companies like Klarna or Affirm that allow you to, you know, uh, buy now, pay later, right? This, is, this has come to our industry, right? So as a property owner or a small property manager, how do you offer the same you know, payments and installments or through credit? How do you do that? It's, that's also why it may also be hard for us to get 
hear more direct bookings is because people are expecting a bit more service, not just around the flexible cancellation policy, but even payment terms. And that, you know, for some people, they can't just book with you if they have to pay so much money upfront. So that's to me, that could be explaining the, the market. I don't know what you think of that, Mark. I, I'm really glad you brought this up because this is something that I wanted to sort of dig in to you directly with because you're a dairy on the top of it. So Klarna is, is not new. Klarna has been around for a long time. And if anybody who doesn't know what Klarna is, and I feel like it's maybe more popular in the, in the UK and maybe the US and anywhere else, but Klarna is basically paying installments. It's just like having a credit card, but there's no interest. So you a very common um, phrase that you'll hear now is paying free or paying for. And for purchases, whether it's, an, you know, um, you're buying some clothes on, and we're insert your favorite clothes store or whether it's a vacation, you've now got the ability to help with the budget and then not have to pay a one grand, two grand, three, three grand holiday up, up front. And you can spread the cost out. So it looks really, really um, uh, good on the book in front of the guests. Now, Verbo, the Expedia group, have jumped on this and they have partnered with Klarna and they now offer that as part of how, how you book. I can't see it being that long until booking.com and Airbnb catch up and they start to do this as well. Now, the way it, it means for you, you as the as the host, you still get, get your money up front, but then it's just they, they pay it in installments to via Klarna. It's just like PayPal, Klarna. PayPal have brought in their own paying free or paying for, and everybody's sort of starting to, to bring it in now. Klarna are the ones that started it, and it's very, very successful, multi-billion dollar company already. And I think for me, I'm always looking at what these big guys are doing, how the big chains are doing, and how can us as hospitality owners, property managers, how can we bring it into our business? Now, this is where you're going to have to start potentially bringing the pressure into your property management software, your PMS the likes of your host fillies and your uplistings and your guesties. And they'll obviously then have to then work with the likes of Stripe. But how can you start to mimic this into your own business? Anybody who uses PayPal, for example, to take payments, you can already do this. It's simple little setup. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to chat with you, um, Tebal, I don't know if it was on your things to discuss, but I, I heard you talking about Hopper. And Hopper is really interesting to me. Now, again, it, I've, I've used Hopper for the, for the last few, few years. It's an app on your phone and it was primarily bought in for flights. And it was, it was really good for me to try and find flights um, at a discount. But now, I think since the back end of last year, 2021, the last quarter, um, I've had somebody reach out to me from Hopper who is, who is in, the, in the rentals world, which is their new sort of thing that they're doing. But t -Bot, could you, I don't know much about it. I've had the person reach out to me on LinkedIn and I've said, listen, Please, the first quarter, don't talk to me. I've got so much going on. But, you know, after the first quarter of this year, we'll have a chat and a discussion and see what you want to talk about. But, Tibor, I don't know if you've got any, anything um, that you want to discuss more about Hopper. And, and I feel like for everybody who's tuning in, it could be good to be a first mover on this. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm going to quickly chime in on Hopper, and then we'll go back to the questions we had, which is like, what is Book Direct? How did it get started? And go through there. Because... Again, it's really important. I think through the context we had already, right? You can see there's pros, there's cons. There's, what's important is, again, uh, what experts say, right? And that's like, you know, um, always, where's the data from, right? That's why, that's why I'm so always big on data. What are we talking about? Because you know your market better than anyone else, right? So, so use the data, look at what they're saying and say, okay, hmm, okay, it looks different from me. Why is it different, right? So, so my, that's always my, what I learned uh, here. So Hopper, so Hopper is interesting. I mean, we are probably have a lot of Europeans here in the room today. Uh, so Hopper in the US, well, Hopper was the number one downloaded app, the most downloaded travel app in the US last year, right? Ahead of Airbnb, Expedia. They are really big. Uh, they, they're really big on capturing Gen Z, Gen Z, how you want to say this, millennials, which obviously I'm completely a Gen Z person, as you can tell. Um, so they're very big on that. And what, what they do, they are able, they've just launched Hopper Homes, which their holiday rentals offer, right? And what's really striking with Hopper that they are, again, able to bring a layer of flexibility, as she was talking about. Basically, Hopper is like a new form of OTA, of a new form of Expedia-ish website. You can book flights, hotels, and now 
uh, cars and, uh, and now as well uh, as vacation rentals. Um, and they bring a new layer of flexibility where again, it's, it can be hard for us to compete. Uh, for example, for flights, they bring price freeze, right? If you, I know prices of flights can vary. If you like a price now, and if you pay Hopper, let's say, you know, five dollars. They can freeze that price, and you can book it later if you want at that price you saw, right? Or they can you can sell you a cancel anytime option. So even if the flight cannot be canceled, you can cancel up to twenty four hours in advance of the flight. If you buy from Hopper, if you buy from Hopper, right? This kind of guarantee or insurance ish product, if you will. Imagine if it bring this to us, right? Even if our Consensual policy is not flexible, non-refundable. They can actually let us keep our, our uh, policy, but allow the guests to cancel because the guests would have bought from Hopper a sort of policy or insurance, insurance travel insurance-ish product that pays them back. It's just a, a, they, so it's gonna be, it's, it could be change, real life changing. And again, between why are we talking about this for our debate? It's like, the competition from the, these big channels has moved on into the way they can still offer more services, you know, ways to pay, ways to freeze prices. And maybe some of, us are, some of us are using dynamic pricing, but maybe some people want to freeze prices. How do we do that? It's a whole level of complexity. How on earth can you, how on earth can you, uh, you know, uh, be on that level? Just teasing you with that. But, but to, to get started though, uh, to go back to uh, uh, so the second part of the debate here, because it's already, uh, half of it, uh, how this whole hashtag gets get started? How did it get started, Mark? The whole uh, direct booking thing? Well, oh, direct, sorry. How, how did it get started? I think we all know that it was Amy Hino and what she's doing at VRM Intel who started the, the hashtag book direct day, sort of bringing hosts together, which is a great thing. As far as where did hashtag book direct get so popular? Um, I feel like I may have a little bit to, to play responsible for that to a certain extent because it's something that we've been talking about and the hospitality community, which is the free Facebook group that everybody's part of in, in here has played a large part of it. Every Thursday we come together and we do a Thursday social where we spread the word on social media. We, uh, we, we put posts up, we share each other's posts, we like each other's posts, engage each other's posts and spread the word of direct bookings. And, and this has been my, my whole goal really since starting this in 2016 because I saw the the lack of support locally in my local area of Scarborough and Whitby and North Yorkshire and I could see a, a massive lack of support on a, on, a, on a sort of national and international level so I created the hospitality community as a way of educating guests so educating hosts on how to get direct bookings but I knew so that with everything that I was teaching if I could educate hosts on direct bookings then in turn we would educate guests and that's the big thing here is that we're, we're trying to educate the guests to book direct and it's all about putting it in simple places that they can see and how they can be educated. When I came into the family business, one of the main things that I wanted to do is to, to really build our direct bookings, to really make sure that the offline word of mouth that we had came online. And everything that I did was around increasing that direct bookings and educating the guest. Because I don't know about you and everybody on, on the call here, we, every time I had a problem to deal with and I had to go to booking.com, I would, I would much rather eat glass <laughs> because it was just such a, 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 a tedious, strenuous process. And we, I always knew whenever I was going down the route of booking.com or anywhere, Expedia, Airbnb, they're always trying to side on the guest, which, you know, for, for me um, and, and the business and the family business, I didn't want to build my house on someone else's land. So it was really important to me to, to, to do that. And then in 2016, when I started it, this boostly this the podcast and started the facebook group and the blog it was to help host learn that there are really easy and effective ways but don't cost any money at all to increase your direct bookings i know there's something that you, you do want to talk about the time the money the effort um, but we'll definitely dig into it why has it grown so popular you know i think over the last couple of years and particularly 2020 and I, and I think this, is, this, this thing that I'm going to say now is, is even more prevalent in the USA because the USA and, and Canada and maybe, you know, you got the, the Americas, they're big Airbnb fans because obviously Airbnb came from San Francisco, you know, but it's, it's, some of, it's, it's one of their own. And a lot of people just listed a property on Airbnb, maybe got a couple of properties just listed on Airbnb and they're fine with it. But in March 2020, when Airbnb sent a message out to all of their guests and say, listen, you can 
cancel. Doesn't matter what the policy is, you can cancel, get your money back. I think that really pissed off a lot of people because a lot of people were down revenue wise. And there was no, I mean, Airbnb have now admitted that they were wrong. They shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have done what they did. And there's no heads up. They're not saying, hey, this is what we're going to do. They just sent it out to everybody. And I feel that after that, and I can speak from a personal point of view as somebody that speaks to a lot of hosts that we have, you know, about 20, 30 conversations with hosts every single week with websites. I feel like on the back of that, hosts who are very reliant on Airbnb, just that platform, are now going, right, if I'm going to have this business next year or two years or five years, I've got to get a property management software. I've got to get a website. I've got to, you know, build my own business here because I can't have that happen again where, you know, I know, I know people that had five figures literally wiped out in the space of 24 hours and, and the business really struggled and could have struggled if, you know, if, if America had had the same sort of lockdown as that, what a lot of people in Europe had or, you know, Bali did have and Australia and New Zealand had, but, you know, it, it could have got messy. So I think this is why it's really, really important that we talk about it. We talk about it today. We talk about it every day. And this is why we're doing this. So I hear your points. I hear your points, several of them actually, uh, because in a way, I think most people here listening here uh, or who have a vacation rental, uh, either, either you know, if it's their own property or if it's investment, we all are sort of entrepreneurs, right? And telling entrepreneurs, hey, we'll give you a fine way to have more freedom, to re reclaim your freedom and have more control. You know, more freedom and control is I think one of the first reasons why we even set up a company or became entrepreneur. So it is talking to us. It is attractive, I would say. But now if you do the math, right, we just saw, for example, that um, uh, the average value of their booking was was bigger. Okay. Um, and I would say one thing about it. Could be, maybe it's lower on the, o the OTA channels because what happens there, maybe it's on purpose, right? Maybe what I'm doing is that, uh, I'm putting, if I'm a large, again, that's data from large property managers, right? If you have a portfolio of properties, maybe what I'm doing on, on, uh, on an OTA, I'm putting out there, not my whole portfolio, maybe just the ones that are less, that would be the hardest to get, to get direct bookings. And I'm even ready to discount them if it doesn't work out. So it could be just, again, just what I was saying, like, look at the data. What does it mean? It's a portfolio of properties. So maybe these property managers are, you know, um, it's not that they're more expensive on their website, <coughs> that the best properties are on their website. They keep their calendar open on their website and they close the calendars on the OTAs at some point. And they use the calendar, the OTAs in a great way to get bookings in the low season, for example, or for the worst of their properties. <laughs> and when they're even ready to discount, if it need be, to even get to get some occupancy, right? So so, uh, so when I see the data, oh, the, the, uh, the value is bigger direct, I'm like, well, can I? I don't know. I don't know. It's just, a, just some... Um, aggregate data. I don't know what to think here. What, what's your view? I think when you, when you look at data from the large property managers, it's just like looking at the data from a, from a big chain hotel, like the Marriott or the Premier Inn. You, know, you, you, you can't really take it into context about what we're doing. And I think the majority of people in here are between one to you know, 100 properties, and that, you know, one to 50 even. right? And I think that when you get to that sort of level, they easily can, can wipe off rates and accommodation and, and sort of price per night because it, it's not applicable to them if you look at a you know if you go stay at a premier inn the reason why hotel tonight got so popular in the states is because for them it's more about getting bums on beds or heads on beds than it is the actual price per night and they would just massively discount and i think big property management companies are all well and good the, vol the volumes and the numbers look amazing. But when you get to that sort of level, there's so many schoolboy errors that I see on, a, on an individual and, and sort of mass basis when it comes to what we're talking about, which, which is marketing. And I think for, for us, it's, it's, it's really important to, to make sure that number one, you know, if we're going to talk about the price for a direct booking to the price on the OTA site, there are so um, many- Delivery, are you expecting anything, darling? Wendy, Wendy Horswell, <laughs> your microphone. There's so, so many tools that are available right now to us, small hosts from one to say 50 properties that will really skew it back in your favor. And I'll give you a little example. Right now, you can go on to your property management software, whether that's free to book, um, Guesty, Toki, whoever it may be, let's just say the good ones, you know, 
And what you can do is the rate that you give to the OTAs, you can mark it up 20, 30, 40, 50%. So the rate that's on your website, let's just say it's 100, and you can put it as for the OTAs at 150, okay? So massively skewed. And then with the marked up price, you can then tap into bookings.com's opportunities. And Tibolt will know this more than anybody else. The opportunities at booking.com in the extranet, they throw at you so many discount, discount, discount. Yeah. So then you can literally, then you can manipulate their system to then still make it. So say that you mark up your price that you send to the OTA by 50%. But then you knock 35% off that price that you see on booking.com and it's still a better rate on your website. Now, when I was doing this, I never had that advantage. I didn't have the opportunity to do the, the, the big markup that, that you now get. And so I feel that us hosts at a, a, low, a lower level between one and say 50 properties, we've got all the tools that we, the, 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 what we have got right now is, is fantastic and phenomenal. I feel that the stats and the figures, that's what I, I said right at the very start. The ones that come from the big property managers and, and all of that jazz, Bacasa and all of that, you've got to give it into context is that there's, they've got so many things going on. They've got so many spider webs going on. The, the rates that they give, they have not got total control or they haven't got a clue what they're doing when they get to that sort of level, as much as what we can potentially do and we can play with right now. So, okay, I, I agree with you on that point. Uh, and actually, it's a question Jacqueline has. She's talking about anyone doing marking, markup, sorry, on booking.com. And I am doing the same. I am this very thing, right? My pri direct price, I take my price on my website. The commission on, on, on the commission I'm paying, I don't know, if you are a property manager on, on a property owner on booking.com, you're paying like at least 50, an average 15% commission, right? I mark it by 15%. I mean, yeah, right. Um, oh, and also, that's also yeah. what some people are saying is that it's good to be on 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 these websites because these websites um, are you know are a marketing channel, advertising channel, right? It's called the billboard billboard effect. It's like a billboard. People will see your name and look out for you. But it only works. This billboard effect works for hotels because hotels basically uh, have a name, have a brand location, right? Like hotel. XYZ in Brighton, I can just Google the name of this hotel and find it. If your listing is like an apartment to receive you, how on earth can I find you, right? So I'm okay with that. But if you don't even think that your you can use the billboard effect on OTAs, but if you don't think of putting your a brand name out there to help people find you, how can you, how can they do that? But let me go back to the math though. Okay, so let's imagine I'm, I am doing indeed my markup, everything, this, I'm doing this, right? But yet, it's, it's not the profits. In the end, what matters to me as an entrepreneur is my profits, right? Um, I think it's, you know, in the end, booking.com will, you know, I'll, I'll put my listing there and it take 15%. Oh, it's a lot of money, but uh, I don't have to um, create, pay, uh, update my website. I don't have to pay Stripe or PayPal. I don't have to find ways to generate traffic through social media, even if it's free, it's still my time on social media, right? And my time has a cost. My time has a cost. I could be doing other things, uh, earning more money with that very time. Um, so, and maybe also um, I'm, I'm also using a channel manager or I'm using maybe a dynamic pricing tool. So I have to pay for that, right? So, um, so um, how, how on earth do we make it so that the costs are actually uh, even comparable with um, with things. And I'm going to take another example. In the US, if you're a small property owner, you pay 3% to Airbnb, 3%. So, and they bring OTAs and they will, especially in Europe now. In Europe, um, it's very important, of course, to market in your traveler's language, right? Um, I think Airbnb's, Airbnb and Booking.com's website are in 35 languages. Is your website in 35 languages, right? Can you offer that? English is great. I, you know, I'm trying to speak English today, but that's not my native language, as you can hear. You know, and I think a lot of travelers actually, when it comes to picking places, looking at details, they they like kind of having some information about this. So that's what my argument is like. Yeah, there's a cost, but uh, even doing your direct booking marketing is is expensive and maybe not as as efficient for the reach to get clients. What do you think, Mark? Mm -hmm. I was just waiting for you to tag me in. And I would, I would love this because this is just not me who's going to come back to this because this is a question that comes for a lot. I can see in the chat, please leave your comebacks to that. Now, my initial, and there's loads of ways to unpack this, 
And I would really love it, Anne and Haziz and Megan, mute your microphones because this is going to be like a little section we can clip out and we can add to the social medias. I don't want any background noise on this, please. So That's Anne, Haziz good. and Megan, mute your microphone. Tabal, if you want to mute them for me, that would be amazing. So, okay, first and foremost, first and foremost, the, 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 the comeback, the kickback to say, why should I do my direct booking marketing when I can just put it on Airbnb and booking.com and they will market the property for me? Maybe in 2019, you could do that. Maybe in 2018, maybe in 2017 or 2016. But as we move into 2022, we're going to go into 2023. There are so many people who are coming into this industry. All you've got to do is go and check out Tibalt's episode where he interviewed uh, Graham from Sykes, Graham Donahue, the, the CEO and founder of Sykes. And look at the numbers that he shared of how many new conversations he's having with people who are coming into this industry. I believe off the top of my head, it was over 15,000 over the course of last year, more conversations that are having about people coming into this industry that want to use Sykes. And that's just Sykes, right? So if you're just going to go in that, that sort of um, method and sort of mindset, then guess what? you're going to spend as much time making sure that your listing on booking.com or Airbnb is going to be visible. Airbnb will not do your marketing for you. Someone will come onto your Airbnb and your location. And if you're on page two, guess what? You're not going to get seen. And there's a, there's a really good example that I can share with you. And it's one that I've lived today and I've lived the last few weeks. and I'm going to be living for, for the next couple of weeks of my life. And this is, this is with this book. This book right now is on Amazon, only on Amazon. Just because I've listed it on Amazon doesn't mean that I'm going to get a book sale. I still have to market this book myself to then send people to Amazon. And Amazon is a really good example of this because if us as hospitality owners share the mindset of what Tabolt just mentioned there, of just having it on Airbnb, then you got to look at Amazon and look at Airbnb. And if they keep going on the trajectory that they're going, what's to say that Amazon, that Airbnb can't turn around and do what Amazon do? Because we all complain about 3% or 4% commission or 15% commission or 20% commission. In the chat, guess how much commission I have to pay for a book sale that comes in from, from Amazon? Have a little guess. Have a little guesstimate right now. Give me a percentage. How much do you think it is? How much percentage? How much percentage do I have to think that I have to pay Amazon? Seventy percent. I only get thirty percent for every book sale that, that comes in, which is crazy. Now, what is not saying that? What is there not to say that Airbnb? The more that they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're getting the massive market share, and they pretty much push Booking.com out the way. And Booking.com are playing catch up right now. And Verbo are playing catch up right now. What's to say that they got turned around and go? You know what, Mr. Airbnb superhost? that we, you now rely on heavily on us. Instead of this, I think this is a bit of an unfair relationship right now because you're only giving me 15% or 3% for every booking. I'm going to flip that now and we're going to put it to 30%. I'm going to get 30%. Oh, hang on a second. It's even more unfairer. 50%, 70%. Well, well, well to be to be that point, um, actually, if you are, Airbnb is already, already taking 15% from people if they are, for example, I have only right now three properties, right? But I'm using a channel manager to connect with Airbnb. And because of that, I have to pay 15%, yeah. right? Uh, so, but why are they doing this? Because they have to align with booking.com and Verbo because with 15% of a commission, they do two things, right? They need 50% because then they can buy traffic or spend on ads on TV and two, if they take all the prop, if they take three percent from you, it means they still have to take ten to twelve percent from the guests, and they want to remove the booking fee for the guests. They want to remove that because it's just not competitive. People hate paying fees. It makes sense, mm -hmm. right? So they have to get the money from someone. It has to be you. So it is a tricky game for Airbnb. And right now, yeah, maybe they will go to fifteen percent, but it is tricky because, uh, you know, problem are French, but they pissed off a lot of people when they betrayed. Uh, hosts when they force people force them to massive refund, but are they going to be able to do that? I don't know. But yet, even at fifteen percent, that's a pretty good cost. And, and I can see in a comment will say, "Yeah, but uh, my commission. I'm reducing my commissions." I'm like, "Yeah, but have you increased your marketing spend? 
And is your increase in marketing spend more than proportional to the revenues you've been making? Again, I being here devil's advocate, right? But, well, but something I could say is let's imagine, right? Let's imagine in 2020, 2020, 2021, maybe in your markets, people wanted to book direct, right? Let's imagine. But maybe now things will, get, things will get, come better and maybe they will book through OTAs again. I know that's what, what I'm hoping when the travel reopens in Indonesia, people will go back to Airbnb and, and I don't know, all the websites and book there. And I don't want, I don't want to spend money on, on to get these travelers because, you know, they come from so many different markets, by the way. I I'm, I'm much prefer Airbnb booking and come spending money on that to catch this. And, and maybe, again, when travelers reopen, maybe you have a lot of domestic travelers at the moment. But those international travelers, again, the OTAs will bring them to you. And, and I politely also disagree with one of the comments, which was like, uh, you only need to market in, in the main languages. I'm like, I'm sorry. I mean, if I speak another language, you have to market in my language as well, as well, because uh, my language is just as important as yours. Yeah. T tag me in. Tag me in. I, want I muted you for some reason. You didn't tag me. You mute. Look at that. So like, I don't want to hear your argument. <laughs> okay, so this is the second part of what I was going to say. And um, this is really, really important. The time element and the uh, aspects of, of the, the costs. All right. Now, first and foremost, if you get this book today, you will not have to worry about costs because everything in here that I show you is how you can get direct bookings and not have to spend money on Facebook ads or Google ads, etc. So we're going to eliminate the cost. Go and buy the book. It's $15 and the return of investment is huge. Secondly, my family business was a 200 acre farm stay property in the middle of nowhere. The village that we were based in, population 100 people. And this is really important why I'm telling you this. We would never have grown to the level of visibility that we had done if it wasn't for booking.com. Now, you've got to repeat that. We would never have grown our business to the visibility that it had done without booking.com. But, 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 I did not put all of my, all of my chips in the, in the booking.com bucket. I didn't just, just rely on that channel because, yes, the visibility, the, um, the Europeans, the people from, from overseas that saw us because of being on there was great. But I use booking.com like I use Facebook like I use Instagram, like I use Twitter, like I use LinkedIn. It was just another channel. And I had many conversations with people at booking.com over the years. And I've, I've, you know, unofficially, they've said that, listen, we totally understand that when a guest books at a property and they book with us, and as soon as they land in your property, it doesn't matter whether it's a bed and breakfast or a rental, or a vacational, or an apartment, or a year, as soon as they book in, if they were ever to come back, realistically, they should always be booking with you directly, the host. I agree. I, I, I could vouch for that. It's exactly what Booking.com employees say. Exactly. You know, we help you get your first booking. Now it's your job to do try to get them loyal, which is something that's possible. Right, but, but not in Bali, for example. People come once in a lifetime in Bali, and they'll wow. come back. So it doesn't that doesn't work in my market? Ha ha! Take that, Mark. I'm back to me, right? Back to me. But yeah, I totally get what you're saying. There's going to be lots of people around here that don't have a repeat industry, a repeat destination, right? And I totally get that. But you're missing a major part here, which is social media. With the world of social media growing as much as it has done, there's no six degrees of separation anymore. You all know what six degrees of separation is if you don't Google it. With social media, that's down to one degree of separation. And if you do it right, and if you follow the tips in this book and everything that I've been saying over the last five years, it doesn't matter if Tabolt comes to my property and never comes back again. Because if you do your job right, and if you tap into the mindset of how people use social media, think of it right now. When do you mostly use your social media? It's when you're on vacation because you like to show off that you're not in your normal nine to five. You're on a beach in Bali or you're doing X or Y or Z or you're having to fight off the monkeys in the forest of Ubud. 
Okay, and that's when you're going to use social media. And if you do your job right, and if you do your job well, Tabot will be your marketing channel for you. So it doesn't matter if he never comes back to the island, but he will tell his friends, his families, his co-workers. And it's how you do that. It's how you get the guest to post on their social media or to tell their friends about you and not saying, oh, you know what? I booked this amazing Airbnb. You've got them to say, I booked this amazing property from the business called X. You should give them a call. So it really doesn't matter if you've got repeat trade, everybody that stays with you has got a friend or a family member or somebody that they can show off to online. And this is what exactly is in, is in this book. It's exactly what I've been talking about. And, and again, it doesn't have to take you a lot of time. It doesn't have to take, cost you a lot of money. And you know, I'm very annoying when I come to this because any objection to book direct or how to get direct booking, I can bat back with not only my experience, but over a thousand other hospitality experiences from the last five years. And it's, there's so much proof behind it right now. It is insane. And I'm looking forward to the back of this book and to seeing everybody else's experiences um, moving forward for the next five and, and 10 years, because we, we can really dig into this. Um, well, thanks, Mark. Uh, and question time is coming, right? If you do have questions, make sure you, you post them in the comments. And I will agree with you, right? As you know, I'm also big on Instagram as well. And for example, for St. Bart's, we have one of the biggest accounts. I just have two properties there, but my account is bigger than a lot of the famous hotels. Uh, why? Because we're there, we're active, we don't spend too much time. Also, I use Instagram to convert people into newsletter subscribers. So then I can email them and you know tell them about you know the island, what's new, what's happening, is the island open <laughs> to travelers, uh, what are the curfew rules, all this fun stuff. But again, they learn to trust me and depend on me. And also that can of, of course show them my properties and give them some discounts if they want to, explain to them the book direct, so I do it myself but I'm still staying on the OTAs. So to, to close it, what do you think? Should you go direct book, direct completely? Should you balance it out? What, what, what do you think you, people should be doing? Yeah, yeah, you have to balance it out. You have to balance it out. And, and just before I go into that point, just to bring it back to what you said, uh, Tabot, you became the go-to. That's why it was so popular. And, and you've got a really good podcast episode and a video that you did where you talked about this and you laid it out with what you did on Instagram and how you did it for St. Bart. So do go and check it out, everybody. But you became the go-to. So when people were, were, were sort of looking for advice on travel and whatnot, they, they came to you. And I see Damien, Mr. Damien Sheridan in the audience uh, from the Book Direct show. Do go check that out. He has got a really good example of this with a blog that he created for his property in Spain. He created a blog about bus stops and about bus routes. And that blog was put together really well because he's very good with his SEO. And he was able to direct so much traffic to his website and to his business from literally from people Googling, what is this bus route, this journey in where he, he's based in, in Spain? And again, this is, this is just like one example of, of how to do it, but it's about becoming the go-to. It's about becoming the place and the recommendation that, that, that people do. And it's so, so easy, easy, easy to do. It's just, you only know what you know, or you don't know what you don't know. And this is why I put this book together. So I want everybody now to sort of not have a, a, an objection to say, I don't know what to do, because it's literally written in 222 pages right here. You don't have to go and trawl all of my podcasts, the 400 plus podcasts or the YouTube, or you don't have to invest in the, in the Boostly Academy or anything. If, if you can literally just pick up this book and, and get started. And there's literally a tactic in there that will, that will help you. Now, to go back to the percentage, you, I personally believe, and I know there's some people, Heather Bayer, for example, um, amazing host based up in Canada, properties that are, that are in uh, America and Canada. She is 100% direct bookings, which is, which is great for her. She's got 20 years plus uh, experience, got all the marketing channels going on. I feel that for, for the majority of hosts, you've got to have a balance. Because there's an, there's an argument that if you go 100% direct and if you turn off all of the OTAs, well, what happens if your marketing stops? What happens if your referral stops? And you've got to start literally from, from scratch again. So you've got to balance it out. You've got to have an active listing everywhere. And again, this book shows you exactly how to do it. You've got to have an active listing everywhere. You've got to have a visibility everywhere, like the billboard effect of what we're talking about. You've got to have direct and you've got to have third parties and you've got to have a referral network in there as, as well. So if you are 100% direct, fantastic. If you can make it last for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, fantastic. But please don't go cold turkey. Please don't turn off any of the other channels, please don't delete your accounts uh, because that, that would not be, not be good just for, for those rainy days. 
Yeah, and I agree with you, right? Also on that. Again, taking off my, you have a hat, but I'm taking off my hat here. Uh, it's, it's really, really important as well that um, you may not, your site may go down. You, you may have a provider, any kind of reason. You may have, uh, happens to, happened to me once, I forgot to renew my domain name. How stupid can you be? I'm so busy. I forgot, right? I managed to get my domain back, but still, uh, if that happens and you have deleted your accounts, your listings on the others, it's, it's just too bad. For example, you may have garnered reviews on these OTAs. Keep them. Uh, where, where, where I think where the advice here is like just you can be you can have a, an active listing here, but you don't need to give them your full availability, right? You don't need to give your best dates to the OTAs. But do, do you know for shoulder season, off season, why not in that case? If you think you might not be able to catch people usually, right? That's my advice. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Daniela, Daniela, who, um, hello, Daniela, who says also the book direct, of course, is, is better for sustainability or for supporting local community because the money is staying in, uh, in, in local area. The money is not flowing back to San Francisco or to Amsterdam or San Francisco for Airbnb to uh, Texas for Verbo or to uh, uh, Amsterdam for Booking.com, where the money is staying locally, which also is good because after all, guests will be using that the, those very roads. So if you're paying local taxes, it, your, your guests are benefiting from that. So uh, you want the money to stay that. That's yeah. Smart. Do go uh, check out Daniela's Instagram. Daniela's Instagram is a really good one to co like to coincide what what you the amazing what you've done for St. Bart's. Daniela for for for, for my bear, fantastic. Yeah. Please put up your link in the in the chat to your Instagram, Daniela, because it is one yeah. of the best. And I just want to very quickly say, very very yeah. quickly, someone's messaged me directly on Zoom to say, can you sell me the book directly without commission? And this is really important. It brings me back to what I was saying before. I have not got any avenue or potential way of selling you a book directly. This is how much Amazon have monopolized the book world. And this is scary. You know, this is why it's scary to me. But if we keep letting Airbnb grow the rate that they're growing at the moment, the same 15% because they have to play on par with booking.com and Verbo. But what happens if they keep getting bigger? But this is with, with, with Amazon right now. I have not got any way to do this directly. I cannot get the book to you through Kindle directly. I cannot get the book to you. I'm literally saying Kindle. Kindle's not a not a thing. That that is the business. It's like I'm saying Coca-Cola right now instead of saying frothy beverage that will melt, melt your skin. I cannot sell this book to you directly because it has to go through Amazon. I literally cannot do this directly. So this is why it's really important. So you know, I'm having to take that cut because there's no other revenue. You as hosts, as property managers, you have still got this ability. So make hay while the sun shines. You know, I'm a, I'm a son of a farmer. Make hay while the sun shines and take advantage of it. And, you know, I'm preaching to the choir because everybody in this room is doing direct bookings in some way, shape or form. After this, I'm going to be speaking on, a, on another podcast, which is very much Airbnb. And I'm going to have a much bigger battle <laughs> than I have in, in this one. But this is why we have to keep talking about it. So important. <laughs> And to conclude here again, you you mentioned Damien, uh, Damien, who's at the Book Direct show. Uh, uh, you know, it will happen again this year. It's not. There's like multiple resources. But if people don't know your community yet, Mark, how may they reach out to you or be part of your community? What could they be doing? Uh, the best thing to do right now, uh, just go to booster.co.uk forward slash book, get the book, get started, and then once you've got the book, you'll be introduced to my world. Uh, so go to booster.co.uk forward slash book. Go in there, grab the book. It's literally today, which if you get it on the second, the paperback version's got a special discount for the publishers. Put that in there today. The Kindle's only £7.99, so it's like $10, $10 like €8. Euros. And then you're in the world. Once you're in there, then I'll, you'll open the door to all the Team Boostly. And there's so many Team Boostly members in there in this chat today, which is great. Yeah. Just out of instance, if you are part of Team Boostly, put hashtag Team Boostly in the chat very quickly for me, just to see everybody that is in here. So Jody, I can see uh, Tracy, Daniela, Christina, which is amazing to see. But um, Helen, fantastic. Hadil, and, nice to see you. And, and what, what I would add as well is that, uh, you know, when we just to this uh, show, you got, you know, either, either live or watching replay, but you you had access to a, a Dropbox folder, Shadban Mark, where you have these resources you can you should be posting today <laughs> because they actually about, to your point, to helping guests understand that they should book direct or why they should. So make sure you are using the resources today because today is the day, is the hashtag book direct day. Mark, thank you so much for your insights today. I don't want to run too much um, of a time. Is there anything else you need to say to conclude? No, I mean, obviously, this is Book Direct Day. And, and if you're tuning in now, 
if you're tuning in now with us, please do post that on your social medias about, you know, Bug Direct. If you don't know what to post, T-Bolt's email that you sent out to everybody has got a link to a Dropbox in there. And um, yeah, please go take advantage of it. Thank you to everybody that's tuned in. Uh, to all 35 of you, it it's, means the world to me that people spend time in their day to, 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 do, to do so. There's a, I know there's loads going on. So thank you very much for tuning in. And for anybody who is watching on the replay, yeah, please do, please do get involved. Please do, please do go get the book. My goal is to get this to the number one on the bestseller above all the books that are on Airbnb. There are so many books on Airbnb. There are none about direct bookings. So let's get this above the Airbnb books. Uh, and the only way we're going to do so is by leaving a review and going to get the book, whether it's Kindle, Audible, print, you name it, go and do it. But thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone, again, for, for attending today. Uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you, the Boostly community, the Rental Scale-Up community as well. Uh, for more Rental, rental Scale-Up, go to rentalscale-up.com, and you will find there uh, actually also article we wrote with Mark about the Book Direct movement as well. They are there on the website. Go check them out. It's the day, and I wish you all a great day. If you're watching, I hope it, uh, it was interesting to you as well. And have a lot of direct bookings this year. Take care, everyone.